Hey guys, just finished up the FLW title championship on Sturgeon Bay. Uh, had a pretty disappointing finish, to be honest with you. I thought I was going to be able to do a little bit better, make the final day, and have the conditions set up that would have been in my favor. Uh, an opportunity like that only comes around once in a while, so to not capitalize is pretty disappointing. But uh, this video is going to give you a rundown of what I, what I did the baits I was using, and kind of the progression throughout the tournament. So going into this event, I was aware that there was going to be a 100 boat local tournament uh, on the final weekend. And knowing that, I knew there'd be an extra 100 boats out on the water pressuring the, the most uh, community areas, which this time of year on Sturgeon Bay is really the Ship Canal area. For whatever reason, that's like the most consistent area on the lake for late August into September. That's the toughest time to fish Sturgeon Bay. And it really showed in this instance, there were not too many guys that did well outside of uh, the shipping canal area. And knowing that, and knowing how the weather was setting up for a strong north wind on the final day, I knew that if you could make the top 10, it was gonna be a low weight uh, tournament and it really would have been anybody's ball game. So I, uh, we got two days of practice. I went around looking at all the areas that I thought could be good and I knew are good uh, either earlier in the, in the summer or later in the fall. And I just never was able to find anything where I had a good concentration of fish. <clears throat> Late on the second day of practice, I made a trip over to the uh, west side of Green Bay and hit some offshore spots, some shipwrecks, uh, things like that. Had a little bit of luck and also ran through a couple of the rivers. Uh, there's like four, actually I think there's five or six rivers that come in. Uh, and I ran through pretty much almost every one of them and was able to find fish in all of them. Um, it wasn't fast and furious. It's not the type of fishing that will produce 100 pounds worth of bass in a uh, numbers game like this MLF format was. And it's not the type of fishery that really will win a five fish derby either. <clears throat> it's just a good way to catch fish. And I felt like uh, by cycling through those rivers, I would be able to move my way up and hopefully get to the final round where with the conditions we had, you could win out of those rivers. You could catch 50 or 60 pounds if things lined up and move on and actually win this tournament because I think it took 45 pounds or something like that on the final day. So, you know, my goal was just to continue to move on. And, you know, I, I felt good at the end of our practice that I would be able to catch some fish, but I, I really didn't know how good it was gonna be either. Um, <clears throat> so the, the first day of the event for me was on Monday. It was the first day of fishing. Uh, they take the 50 guys that qualify, split us up into group A, group B. We each have 25 guys. And then after combined two days of fishing, the top 10 out of that 25 moved on to Friday uh, and then fished against the top 10 from the other group. And uh, in this case, I, I was running across the bay. I hit a couple of spots offshore first, was able to catch some fish. Uh, I think I got two pretty much right off the bat. And then I went up... Uh, a couple of rivers and was able to catch the rest of my weight the remainder of the day and then on the way back I made a stop offshore again and caught another keeper and I think I ended up I think I was in fifth place after the first day and uh, it really it really just was kind of consistent fishing throughout the day I did lose some fish that would help but ultimately it's in this format if you're sitting in good position to begin with you're really not that upset about losing fish because you know that you're coming back and you might catch these fish again. Um, on Wednesday, I think I dropped from fifth to sixth by the end of the day, but it really was one of those scenarios where I wasn't fishing my primary stuff. I was trying to establish other patterns in that same general area, off uh, offshore and you know in some of the rivers, just trying to uh, use it as a practice day to try to find more water and to save the fish that I had found. And in this case, you know, I really didn't find anything. So I, I did later in the day, you know, as some guys started getting closer to that 
uh, to my weight, moving me down a couple spots. I went and I had to catch a couple of fish to secure me inside the top 10. But the thing that was nice about it was I didn't, I didn't pressure my fish. Uh, I could leave most of them, uh, most of the good areas I left completely alone, giving it another couple extra days to the rest. So that moved us on to Friday. It was the top 20 guys. I uh, was in the top 10 from group A, moved on, and we had really uh, pretty windy conditions on that Friday. And I ended up trailering to the far, uh, the far west side. And my game plan was to fish a couple of rivers, hit the primaries in each river, and you know, hopefully be inside the top 10 to move. So my day started out pretty slow. I didn't have any keepers in I think like the first hour and a half of fishing. Uh, I made a move, I got into another area that had some fish and I think I caught my next five fish uh, that bit, ending that first period which put me right, right around 10th place. I was sitting decent um, and after the, the first break period we moved, um, I think I moved up to 8th at one point, I think I caught another fish pretty quick and then I ended up losing like 5 or 6 fish in a row. And when I say losing them, it was, uh, I think I lost two of them, but the other three or four were, you know, instances where I saw the fish eat the bait, the whole bait was gone, I set the hook and I just rolled their mouth and for whatever reason the hook didn't stick. Definitely disappointing, um, I ended up catching I think one more fish in that area. And at that point I had to make a decision. I, was, I had fallen to like 12th or 13th and I think I was 10 or 11 pounds behind. I was in a location where I had fished through the areas that I thought were best. So I decided with an hour to go to drive back to my boat or drive back to my truck and trailer up to it, another location. Uh, I went up to another river where there, uh, I had practiced and seen some fish. And at that point, you know, I, I was able to get the boat in and launch right before the end of the second period, so I was ready to go for the start of the third period. And, you know, unfortunately I got up there and the current was different. The fish were not set up where I had found them in practice. Uh, I went out and fished some stuff out by the main lake and I caught a pile of 12 inches. I don't know what happened to the better quality fish and it just didn't happen. You know, it was a, a move that I felt like moving to fresh fish that I hadn't hit in the tournament yet would really set up well and I'd have the potential to catch 15, 20, 25, 30 pounds in a period and be able to securely set myself up in the top 10. I was saving another uh, area that I thought could produce really decent weight and I didn't want to drive there because it was further and I thought if I could save it until Saturday it would be even fresher and it probably was a mistake. I probably should have gone down there for the third period, but uh, it's all a strategy game. You know, these multi-day tournaments, these total weight tournaments, it's all about saving fish, what fish to burn, you know, how much weight do you need? There's no reason to win the periods. There was no incentive for us to catch 150 pounds. You know, it was, you needed to be inside that cut line to move on. And, um, <clears throat> I'm just really disappointed because on Saturday, with the wind conditions, the weights were so low, I really feel like I would have been in a better position to do well. Uh, and I think I would have done very well had I been up there, especially if you can keep the fish buttoned up. So I had my opportunities on day two. I did not capitalize. Um, it was a great event. I love going to the Surgeon Bay area. Door County is beautiful. It's a great vacation area, great place to bring, bring the family. So we had a good time regardless. <clears throat> from a bait a bait standpoint it was pretty simple offshore stuff I was throwing a um, NSJ 871 spinning rod that I built it's a mud hole uh, component rods that you can get at the mud hole site it's an MHX blank that's like my go-to smallmouth finesse rod on that I was just drop shotting a Berkeley flatworm Maxent flatworm didn't really seem to matter what color that bait just catches them, as you know, they're catching them all over on it. So that was my offshore bait. Um, up in the rivers, uh, my primary bait was a dirty jig, swim jig. I started with the finesse swim jig. Uh, 
with a Berkley the deal on the back, the three and a half inch size. That's my favorite swim jig combination right now. The problem was I was not prepared to power fish. So I did not have as much uh, of the product that I needed to do well. So I ended up going through all my finesse swim jigs, all the regular swim jigs. Uh, I like to throw chartreuse in white color. I used them all up. There were a ton of pike back in these marsh areas that I, I was fishing in the rivers and you just you just would get bit off left and right i think i probably went through 15 of them during the tournament uh so i the 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 trailers i threw i went through all my berkeley deals i ended up throwing power swimmers on the back uh, after that which are a great swim bait as well but i really just kind of burned through all my chartreuse and white colors and at the end it was just kind of sloppy with whatever i caught some fish on a, a big chartreuse spinner bait and Anytime I'd come to a log jam, uh, I would pitch in with a, uh, a Texas rigged uh, Max Scent Creature Hog by Berkeley as well. You know, that's, that's one thing I want to stress. Everyone talks about the flatworm being so great. The key with the flatworm isn't the shape. It isn't like the size necessarily. It's, it's that Max Scent material and the other Max Scent products are made out of the same material and the smallmouths like them just as much. So that creature hog in the max scent material really held up great. I caught a bunch of fish on that as well. But that was my key baits. I kept it pretty simple. I did catch some on a, on a Berkeley Chapo, uh, especially in practice. That was a good bait that I used to locate fish. I take the hooks off or roll the hooks in and you get to see the strikes and you can determine the size of the fish without ever hooking them. And that's a, that's a big thing I like to do. But that was it, I kept it pretty simple. Uh, we've got a lot of fish catches here. Um, I'm just gonna show them all from all three days. There's really no reason to break them out from one day to the next. Uh, but there's some pretty cool fish catches. And you know, I'm not gonna show them all to you because it's total weight format. I don't wanna make the video super long, but uh, there are some cool fish catches and you get to see uh, what I was doing offshore and you get to see what I was doing uh, up in the rivers. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe if you like it. Uh, this was our last professional level tournament of the year. There are a couple more local ones I'll be doing. <clears throat> uh, hopefully have some videos for that as well. Some Bridgeford events, things like that. And we'll be put, put, putting out some more videos uh, to kind of show all of that. So thanks for watching. Tune in. Pissed him off. That's a good one. We got a break. Right Come on behind. That is a big long fish. We will take a picture. Four pounds, ten ounces. Four ten. I knew there was one. I said yesterday I would fish this log jam every time. Four ten and four. Picture. Four ten beauty. Tyler Stewart on the tenth place, cut a two pound nine ounce bass. 
that's your deficit between him and you to 13 pounds. Get some Tyler Stewart. He's trying. We got five pounds. drive home for me? No, I got a job, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird how you guys keep fishing and, or you keep working and guys keep fishing. Yeah, I'm steady fishing. Yeah, you're, you're, you got a... On the head. Two pounds. I get an extra two ounces because I guessed it on the head. stretch. Okay. Give it a few more minutes. I'm trying to catch one more and then I think I'm done. That's a big one, dude. That's a battle wagon right there, man. That's got to be. It. That's only four eight, four, four nine. nine, four nine. Just lean and mean. Look at that guy. Four nine. Beauty. Beauty. Awesome, man. 
You can go, Jody. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't get wet. Don't get wet on the way back. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we at right now? I really don't want to burn anymore. Yeah, I don't see it just a minute.